Hey guys, this is Dan the Man over here speaking to you. So today we have another episode with a brand new 2022 Porsche Cayenne and this is actually the Platinum Edition. It's basically a limited edition that comes with panoramic sunroof, heated and ventilated leather seats and stuff like that. Just a little bit of extras added to the car. But rather than that, this is basically the base Porsche Cayenne 2022 and it's about 96,000 euros over here in Romania. We all know that the Porsche Cayenne is the car that actually saved Porsche from bankruptcy. The Cayenne, since it came out, the first model I'm talking about, the one that's, I don't know, a couple grand right now, uh, that's the car that saved them because they only had two-door sports cars and this is what changed everything. This is the highest selling car that they own. I also like the fact that even though it's a platinum edition, they changed literally nothing in the front end of the car. Everything is very conservative. Everything yells, this is a Porsche. But if we go around the car, we can see that we have bigger wheels. They're 21 inches instead of 19 inches. And also they're different dimensions front to back. So in the front, we have 275, 40, 21. And here in the back, we have 305, 35, 21. Also, everything is trimmed out in black. That's the panoramic roof over there that also opens and it's actually huge. And here in the back, uh, this is... The biggest change that Porsche did to the Cayenne since the model came out. So we have this LED strip that just travels all across the back end of the car that unites the left and right stops together. I think that's how you call it. Just correct my English down in the comment section below. Also here, let me just wipe this out a bit. So here it says Porsche and it's basically on the inside of this uh, plastic cover we don't have anything written on the car itself we have blacked tips you can see that they're also real and there are four tips in total so alike all of the other SUVs on the market we have here a big wing or a spoiler whatever you want to call it but at the same time after you pass 160 kilometers an hour, that's around 80 to 90 miles per hour, something like that. The wing literally just pops up just a little bit so it can plant the rear end of the car even more to the ground. So we can see that we have an electrical trunk that also has soft clothes, 770 liters big. So the only SUV that has a bigger trunk than this is the new Range Rover Sport. Other than that, this is not the king, but the queen of trunk space. You can see that we can action the rear suspension from over here on this button and now I can also lift it. It's a bit noisy but it works. And one other feature but it's kind of annoying that it's very 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 slow. The other button over here gives power to the trail hook but it's so slow. Why couldn't it just pop down and you can lift it with your foot? I think that would have been faster, but at the same time, it's a Porsche, so... Look. Oh! It's automatic. At least that. Underneath all of my camera equipment, we have a place for a, almost a place for a spare wheel, but it's incomplete. <laughs> and the big-ass subwoofer from the Bose sound system. We have soft clothes on the trunk, but at the same time, we have soft clothes on the doors as well. That's actually very dangerous. And let me just exemplify how. Uh, I need a stick. I need a stick. This is a stick. Okay, so this is a thicker stick. A thicker stick. Imagine if that was your finger that would have hurt a lot so yeah soft clothes is something that's potentially very dangerous so if we pop the hood we can see that the base model comes with a 3 liter v6 engine the same engine that comes on the audi q7 q8 and whatnot basically it's a volkswagen engine so or an audi it's the same thing anyways this comes in the base model it has only one turbo and produces 340 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque but at the same time, you can also buy a 
V6 that's twin turbo uh, you can buy the 4 liter V8 and also there's the e-hybrid model that comes with this particular engine but it's also helped by another electrical engine that gives a total of 462 uh, horsepower and probably around 700 newton meters of torque you can imagine that quality wise there's literally nothing to argue about it's a Porsche. If it's not a Bentley or a Rolls Royce, you don't get better quality materials like in this one. Everything is leather, handmade stitches over here. The center console is a little bit easier to use than the previous generation because we're lacking all of those 200 buttons around here. It's all tactile and touchscreen, but they ease it up a little bit. The infotainment system works very good. It has a very, very good resolution. Apple CarPlay is in full screen. You have the biggest ways you can find. You have here all of the information about the car. You can change the lights and the colors and literally everything. It's a very, very complex system that you're gonna take a while to get used to it but at the same time it's so goddamn pleasant because the resolution is amazing here and also in the cockpit i also love the fact that they kind of went in between with the analog and digital so we have the rpm meter that's analog and all of the other screens are digital at least they kept it true to the brand by keeping the rpm meter this, that way also we have the sports corona package that comes with this uh, center clock we have the sports gauge that lets you choose between normal sport sport plus and also individual you also have here a button for individual but because the car is not turned on you cannot access it also in the middle for those who don't know if you press this this is the sport response button it comes over here it pops up and the sport response button basically gives you all of the power possible for 15 seconds or 20 seconds something like that i like the fact that the steering wheel it's it's pretty thick it's not bmw m sport steering wheel thick i think the bmw m is the thickest in the industry but at the same time this is exactly where it should be the paddles are metallic uh, and they're on the steering wheel not on the column and for those who don't know give me the camera <clears throat> the porsche always starts from the left side why because when they were racing at le mans they had to start the race before entering the car so the drivers would just run to the car and with the left hand they would turn on the uh, ignition and the right hand will just put in gear so they can drive faster and they won about one one and a half seconds ahead of all of the other cars in the competition also if you stay there you can see that here we have the porsche stitching this comes on every porsche you buy right now give me the camera also we have the panoramic roof i talked about it but look how big this is and at the same time it says right here on the floor platinum edition okay the pockets are humongous you can open the trunk from over here and then you have the seat memory and all of that that's my actual camera guy that's not the camera guy but he <laughs> is actually the dude that films for the main channel here in romania and i'm filming him and now he's filming me even I though i love them i love them <laughs> <laughs> in the back we can see here the four zone climate control we have two usb c's over there and one 12 volt socket we also have another ashtray yeah that's an ashtray over there and the seats recline backwards forwards i need two hands for that dos manos por favor and you can also recline this so yeah basically porsche thought of literally everything and yes this car is quite amazing okay now it's time to drive this thing because this is what the porsche is all about and for this i'm gonna take off my hat my lucky hat i just want to say that the camera is exceptional 
Okay, the rear camera is very low, therefore it gets dirty very easily, but other than that, the quality is exceptional. It's a Porsche, you don't expect anything else. Uh, the side mirrors have kind of a weird shape. They're uh, not oval, but sort of. And I would have preferred that on a car this big for the side mirrors to be a little bit bigger. But that's okay. If you want to compare this with the Bentega or the Audi Q7, this is the sportiest of them all. Why? Because the gearbox, uh, this is not the PDK, it's a ZF8 HP. So the thing with this is that they optimized it for the sportiness. If you drive the Q7 with the same engine and the same transmission, that's actually optimized for comfort and if you drive the Bentega that's even more comfortable so keep that in mind whenever you want to choose uh, your next car figure out which of the brands from the same manufacturer gives you the most comfort gives you the most sportiness and so on that's actually something you have to keep in mind also uh, it, just if you look at the details all around the car even though you pay the same amount of money for the Porsche Cayenne uh, that you would have paid for an Audi Q7, uh, look, the paddles, they're metallic. On the Audi, they're uh, plastic. And basically everywhere you touch in the car, the door pockets, they're uh, soft on the inside. Uh, you even have here in the back, on the lower part of the chair, it's like a very soft mat. So the attention to the details is exquisite. Handling wise, what could you expect from a Porsche? Because again, sportiness, this is where you get all of it. So that's without a question. But other than that, it's surprisingly nimble and agile. So you can just, even though it's wet, you can just take a corner and floor it you get just a little bit of oversteer but it just handles perfectly and you can attack every corner you want with any speed it's amazing it does not feel like a two-ton car but listen to this this is what happens if you have the car in the sportier setting and you hit a tiny bump that's that was not a pothole that's just regular romanian roads <laughs> so i didn't do anything to harm the car especially uh, except driving it in romania so now let me just turn around once more because the our playground in this area is kind of small now it is time to do the 0 to 60 time So, left foot on the brake, we have hold over there, we press the sport response button, floor the acceleration, performance start, go! Okay, the changes are surprisingly agile. Okay, that's already past <laughs> 60. So, we have 6.2. So, that's an amazing start. Yes, by Porsche. <laughs> so this is the cover for the hood flap. <laughs> it just fell off. <laughs> I'm gonna put it here in the pocket and fix it later. <laughs> so yeah, Porsche declared 6.1 seconds in the north to 60 time. It's wet outside, we had wheel spin and we got 6.2 seconds. So that's also amazing. And my camera guy cannot stop laughing because I had a piece of trim in my hand. As I said, we have the Sports Corona package. It looks amazing. I always love a car that has a watch here in the middle. Actually, that's a clock. The watch is only this one. Correct me in the comment section. Keep in mind, English is my second language. So some terms I may mistake and some terms I may use in English English, not American English. I've driven the Q7 and the Q8 with this engine. I must admit that in this car, 
it feels the most agile which is actually very good to know okay now i put the car in the comfier setting for the suspension not let me just put it in comfort so now what happens it changes the gears in low rpm which is expected and now over here we're gonna hit the same bump that i hit earlier with the car in the sportier setting so let's see how it feels right now it eliminated half of the rigidness of the bump which is quite good that's impressive actually so now this is your turn to go in the comment section below and tell me what do you think about the brand new Porsche Cayenne is it something you would consider to buy or not and also please tell me why and don't forget that a sub to the channel is simply glorifying <laughs> I know that's just copying a little bit of Mr. Who's Your Boss but at the same time I love the guy so why not copy him he's the best <laughs> even though we're not in cars so this was Dan talking to you from Romania in English about cars. So see you next time, I guess.